A new report paints a bleak picture of what could happen if global leaders don't take climate action. The National Climate Change Assessment says by 2050, coastal flooding will, hap will happen five to ten times more often than it does now. The report also details the risk climate change poses to the U.S. energy supply. For more on this report and its findings, let's bring in senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy. Uh, ben, uh, you had a fascinating report earlier on CBS Mornings. Uh, the report, what did the report share about the effects of human-caused climate change? Well, there's a lot in this assessment, and it is pretty sobering. I want to read you just one sentence that really stuck out to me. The authors of this assessment say the effects of human-caused climate change are already far-reaching and worsening across every region of the United States. So they're saying we are seeing these impacts from climate change in every corner of the U.S. We're talking about things like worse drought, more intense heat waves, rapidly intensifying hurricanes, wildfires. And one stat that is really just kind of mind-blowing, they say that we are now experiencing a $1 billion disaster every three weeks on average in this country versus every four months back in the 1980s. And these weather climate-driven disasters are, caused, are costing the country about $150 billion a year, which is a ton of money. So the authors are very direct about this. They say these impacts are being felt. They're costing us a lot, but there are ways to mitigate some of this damage. Well, I'm glad you said that, Ben, because I know this is your area of focus, and you always do great stories that are always fascinating. When I heard this report, though, I thought, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can listen to this again. It just seems like more bad news that sounds exactly the same. So, and part of that has to do with feeling like you can't do anything about it. So what actions does the report recommend? Tell me there's something that can be done. Well, the report's very direct. We can do something about this. They say very directly in one sentence that I thought was just kind of brilliantly said. They said the, they said the solution to this climate crisis is largely in human hands. So it really does depend on what we do. So basically the report says that we have to rapidly cut our planet warming greenhouse gas emissions and transition to renewable forms of energy. So things like wind power, solar power, and those solutions do exist. So this is not something we should throw our hands up in the air and say there's nothing we can do about this. These solutions are there. It's just a question of how rapidly we transition to that. Some of the good news in the report is that we, they actually found that our greenhouse gas emissions dropped by about 12 percent since 2005. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that's just not nearly enough. So, Ben, uh, as you know, you, as you point out, uh, there are things that we can do. And we know that when we take action, the earth can heal itself. I mean, we saw that, for example, in the Indian Ocean with the Maldives, there was fear of warming uh, water temperatures, yeah. killing uh, reefs. And the reefs have come back yeah. um, as they've tried to make amends. For, That's fascinating. Right? But, but I wonder, Ben, what is the roadblock to those changes? I mean, if you're going to tell me money and politicians, that is a huge... What is that saying? A huge road to hedge or hedge to row? Or... Oh, I know what you're saying. You know what I'm trying to say. A huge road to hoe? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you are right. You named two of the biggest things. Uh, money, technology, political will to actually do these things. There's a major climate conference coming up in Dubai uh, that starts at the end of this month where world leaders once again will be in a room and try to figure out what are we willing to do about this. It's not really what can we do about this. It's really what are we willing to do about this. And I mentioned things like renewable energy. You know, costs used to be the major impediment there where we would look at wind and solar power and say it's just too expensive. Well, this report says that the cost of wind power actually dropped 70 percent in the last decade and the cost of solar power plummeted 90 percent. So cost is not so much an issue. A lot of it is political will and whether or not we are able to make this transition quickly enough. We don't want to be too Pollyannish. Some of these effects we're going to deal with for a very long time, no matter what we do. But the future risks that we're willing to bear really do depend on what we do now. All right, Ben, thank you very much.